Stephen Krashen is a professor emeritus at the University of Southern California. He is a linguist, educational researcher, and activist. Dr. Krashen has published more than 350 papers and books and is credited with introducing various influential concepts and terms in the study of second language acquisition. In this PowerPoint presentation, we will study his widely known and well-accepted theory of second language acquisition. As education policy in Krashen's home state of California became increasingly hostile to bilingualism, he responded with research critical of the new policies, public speaking engagement, and with letters written to newspaper editors. By 2006, it was estimated that Krashen had submitted well over 1,000 letters to editors. This number includes a letter that he wrote to the editor of our own, Stuart News, on Tuesday, January 3, 2006, which I'll read to you now. The headline was, Bilingual Education Aids Students with English, and the letter reads, Your December 4 thumbs down blames, quote, bilingual education and poorly educated parents, unquote, for the reported decline in literacy among Hispanics in the United States. Whatever the cause, it is not bilingual education. Study after study has demonstrated that English learners in bilingual education programs typically acquire English faster than those in all English programs. In fact, in the last year, three major studies have appeared in scientific journals confirming this. Bilingual education uses the child's first language in a way that accelerates English language development. And he signed his letter, Stephen Krashen, Professor Emeritus, University of Southern California, Los Angeles. Now, of course, just as there are defenders of immigrants and multicultural and bilingual education, there are critics. They have characterized Krashen as wedded to the moneyed interest of a multi million dollar bilingual education industry. Some of them speak of Krashen as the father of bilingual education, and he might not mind that title. Krashen is being criticized due to his influence on the field of language minority education, second language acquisition, and his efforts to educate the public on matters related to English language learners in schools. Krashen wants us fellow teachers and researchers to be more active in combating the public's misconceptions about bilingual education. He feels that it is our responsibility to present our side of the story to reporters because there is a great deal of anecdotal evidence in support of bilingual education. Krashen's theory of second language acquisition consists of five main hypotheses. The acquisition learning hypothesis, the monitor hypothesis, the natural order hypothesis, the input hypothesis, and the affective filter hypothesis. The acquisition learning distinction is the most fundamental of all the hypotheses in Krashen's theory and the most widely known among linguists and language practitioners. According to Krashen, there are two independent systems of second language performance, the acquired system and the learned system. The acquired system, or acquisition, is the product of a subconscious process, very similar to the process children undergo when they acquire their first language. It requires meaningful interaction in the target language, natural communication, in which speakers concentrate not in the form of their utterances, in other words, not on their grammar or pronunciation, but on the communicative act itself. In other words, did you understand what I just meant? The learned system, or learning, is the product of formal instruction, and it comprises a conscious process which results in conscious knowledge about the language. For example, knowledge of grammar rules. This is precisely how I felt when I was learning Korean while I lived in South Korea. My Korean teacher wanted to practice her English. We were all at the beginning level of Korean. Not only did we learn a lot of grammar rules, but we talked about that kind of stuff a lot. We never had role play conversations. We never had to speak to her in Korean, and she never spoke to us in Korean. There was never really any pressure 
to really speak the language and to help her understand us. So I came away knowing a lot about the linguistics of the language, but I never really felt that I could use it. Is crashing completely against learning a language? Of course not. We'd all be out of jobs and students would feel jilted because most of them do have a need for instruction. What Crashin is telling us, though, is that learning is less important than acquisition. When we are studying Spanish or when our ELLs are studying English, we must provide real, authentic, meaningful opportunities for them to really use the second language. The natural order hypothesis describes two phenomena that are interrelated. First, the natural order hypothesis is based on research findings in the 1970s which suggested that the acquisition of grammatical structures follows a natural order which is predictable. For a given language, some grammatical structures tend to be acquired early while others are acquired late. This order seemed to be independent of the learner's age, the L1 background, and the type of exposure. In other words, were they learning it as a foreign language in a different country where it's not spoken, or were they learning it as a second language inside of the country where it is spoken natively? The average order of acquisition of grammatical morphemes for English as a second language for both children and adults is as follows. First, the ing ending used in the present and past progressive tenses. For example, I am reading. That's the present progressive. And the past progressive is he was listening. Number two, the s ending used in the plural forms of nouns like boys and peaches. Number three, the be verb. I am, is, are, was, were, been. Number four, the irregular simple past tense of the verb, such as he caught a fish, we won the game, or I forgot your name. Number five, the articles, a and the. Number six, the ed ending of the regular simple past tense of the verb, she walked, they learned, you studied, Number seven, the S ending used in the simple present verb tense for the singular nouns or pronouns. For example, he swims, she eats, it watches. And finally, number eight, the apostrophe S ending for the possessive form of a noun. For example, Manuel's book. Now, did you notice? The contradictions for planning curriculum are immediately evident. Having just discredited grammar study in the acquisition learning hypothesis, Krashen suddenly proposes that second language learners should follow the natural order of acquisition for grammatical morphemes. The teacher is first instructed to create a natural environment for the learner, but then, in trying to create a curriculum, he is instructed to base it on grammar. Krashen, however, does point out that the implication of the natural order hypothesis is not that a language program syllabus should be used on the order found in the studies. In fact, he rejects uh, grammatical sequencing when the goal is language acquisition. The second phenomenon of the natural order hypothesis is Krashen's claim that second languages are acquired through four stages in the same way that first languages are acquired. A, the pre-production stage, also known as the silent period. This would be for students who are at the very, very beginning and they don't know a single word of English. B, the early production stage. This is when your ELLs are able to answer with one word. Letter C, the speech emergence stage. Now, in this stage, they're finally entering into the intermediate level which is what most schools would call this, and they're able to uh, answer you in short sentences or write short sentences, uh, lots of grammar errors, the verb might not be conjugated properly to match the subject, 
but they're giving you a little bit more to work with. And then finally, letter D, the intermediate fluency stage. So still, they are at the intermediate stage, but they are much more fluent. They're speaking in compound sentences, complex sentences, and with fewer pronunciation and grammar errors. The monitor hypothesis explains the relationship between acquisition and learning and defines the influence of learning on acquisition. A synonym for monitor is editor. ELLs will use the monitor when they have sufficient time. That means when a teacher practices a method called process writing, the student has lots of times for reading and rereading what he wrote to correct it or when a student is required to speak, the teacher can give extended wait time before she begins again or before she calls on another student. A second language learner will also use the monitor when he or she focuses on form or thinks about correctness or when he or she knows the rule. According to Krashen, the role of the monitor is, or should be, minor being used only to correct deviations from normal speech and to give speech a more polished appearance. Krashen also suggests that there is individual variation among language learners with regard to monitor use. He distinguishes those learners that use the monitor all the time, overusers, those learners who have not learned or who prefer not to use their conscious knowledge, those are underusers, and those users are those learners that use the monitor appropriately. Those are optimal users. Usually ex uh, extroverts are underusers, while introverts and perfectionists are overusers. This brings up the question that language teachers are constantly debating. Who's the better student? The one who takes risks and talks a lot in the foreign or second language but makes lots of mistakes? Or the one who says almost nothing, but when she does speak, it comes out perfectly. Who would you give the A to? The input hypothesis is Krashen's attempt to explain how the learner acquires a second language. In other words, this hypothesis is Krashen's explanation of how second language acquisition takes place. So, the input hypothesis is only concerned with acquisition, not learning. According to this hypothesis, the learner improves and progresses along the natural order when he or she receives second language input that is one step beyond his or her current stage of linguistic competence. For example, if a learner is at the early production stage, most schools would consider this upper beginner or lower intermediate, then acquisition takes place when he or she is exposed to comprehensible input that belongs to the speech emergence level. This is I plus one. Now, of course, unfortunately, not all of the learners in your classroom will be at the same level of linguistic competence at the same time. This is why Krashen suggests that natural, authentic, and meaningful communication is the key, ensuring that each learner will receive some I plus one input that is appropriate for his or her current stage of linguistic competence. Finally, the fifth hypothesis, the affective filter hypothesis. It embodies Krashen's view that a number of affective variables play a role in second language acquisition. These variables include motivation, self-confidence, and anxiety. Krashen claims that learners with high motivation, high self-confidence, a good self-image, a low level of anxiety are better equipped for success in second language acquisition.
using the terminology, these students have a low affective filter. On the other hand, low motivation, low self-esteem, debilitating anxiety about speaking in a foreign language can combine to raise the affective filter and form a mental block that prevents comprehensible input from being used for acquisition. In other words, these students would have a high affective filter and language acquisition will be impeded. For more information, you can go to these two websites. Uh, they are not personal websites. They are papers that he has published, and they are online now. And they will uh, give to you, in Krashen's own words, his ideas about second language acquisition, and more, most specifically, these five hypotheses of second language acquisition.